Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today we're going to take our Screaming RX580 and give it a little bit of Arctic cooling treatment. Keep watching to find out why. So this is the Screaming Mess. This is the Radeon RX 580 power color with the fan currently ramped at 100%, which is important because one of the fans has died. So we need to change that somehow because that is just unbearable. It's only mostly going to be in gaming. Under idle, it's going to be pretty much silent, but that is just too much. So what can we do? Okay, so our power color Radeon RX 580 now, one of the fans has died, which is a, a terrible shame, and it is a two-fan model. We probably could just get by with that one fan, just at full speed pretty much most of the time or under any load, but it's just too much. And what's the point of doing that when you've got fans that you can play around with and a drill that you can drill holes in stuff? So my idea is, well, there's three options. One is to buy a new set of fans from the manufacturer, Powercolor, which... At the moment, they're not replying to my emails, so that strikes that one off the list. Option number two is buy a set of cheap replacement fans from a Chinese wholesaler uh, from AliExpress, as pointed out by C. McKnight. But unfortunately, their shipping times are anything between 20 to 40 working days. So the chances of me getting that done this year is unlikely. So the next option is to modify the card slightly, but not as much to make it unsaleable or unusable or just to make it look plain ugly. So minimum modifications to get that cooling sorted right out. So I actually posted this on Twitter with um, a wanting solutions. Now Vincent from Arctic came back and suggested putting some Arctic fans on there, which yeah, great idea. So I took it apart and had a look and realistically, I could fit one 120 mil fan on there, right in the middle of the heatsink, which worked okay, but it wasn't great. So I said to Vincent, I've done this, what do you reckon? He said, well, it didn't look great, but maybe you should try two of them. So that got me thinking, how am I going to attach two fans to that card? So the easiest way for me to show you is to show you. So let's take the card out and we'll be right back. Okay, so here are the fans outside of the, uh, the graphics card. And as you can see, I've already disconnected that fan from the wiring just to see if I could put a, a battery terminal or a, like a nine volt battery onto the terminals to see if the fan would spin on its own, just to verify it wasn't a, a cable issue. And unfortunately it isn't. Uh, there's nothing going to the actual fan itself. There's continuity in the circuit right up to the solder. But after that, there's nothing else I can check or test. So that is completely dead. So this one still works. So the possibility still lies where I could get a replacement single fan of a similar size and connect it back up to that wiring and will be uh, as pretty much as it was originally. But to me, that seems like a, a step in the kind of parallel direction. So I'm just swapping like for like. And these cards do run pretty hot anyway. So I was having a look at the actual mountains. Now, if you look at the card, now the two mountings for the actual shroud, oh sorry, the four mountings. So you've got one there, one there, one there, one there. And the shroud fits on top like that. So my theory being is, well, originally it was one fan, slap bang in the middle there, attach it to the four mountain pillars or posts by either twist sticks or cable ties or some other method of sticking it on. I did think of hot glue, but I've done that before with radiator pipes, which obviously didn't work because that was a very poorly thought through uh, exercise. Because obviously pipes get hot and as soon as it got hot, the glue melted and popped off. Now these do get out to sort of 90 degrees. So that's kind of borderline melting temperature for hot glue. So we're definitely not gonna try that again. So what I thought I'd do, I don't wanna destroy this too much, but I do wanna have two fans because one fan's okay, but it isn't enough. My plan is to mount two fans on the top. So one there and one there. So giving a, a dual fan setup, so loads of airflow, and it's also gonna have a little bit of overspill to cover 
some of the other areas that get hot, some of the areas that possibly aren't covered by the two smaller fans. So that led me to how am I going to actually mount these in into this plastic without damaging it. So I thought I need to do as little damage as possible because ideally at some point I would like to reinstate this as, as it came out from the factory or as close as I can. So what I'm going to do, which I've done already on the top part here, is taking the old trusty drill and a drill bit and basically drill through two holes through the shroud which the two holes if you look at it closely yeah it's not great but when it's actually on the card and it's in the machine you'd never notice it so what we're going to do is attach the fans just with one screw they're not very heavy fans they're quite quite lightweight in fact so if we put the two fans down like that and match up the screw holes we can put through a normal uh, case fan mounting screw, which handily I have here already. And we can then attach these cables to the motherboard onto the PWM fan headers, and we can use the fan headers to control the fans. Now, because you've got two fans in there, so the, the equivalent of 240 mils worth of cooling, you don't have to have the fans ramped up hardly at all, and you could quite happily use it at the standard stock settings of about 800 to 1000 RPMs, and not worry about it. Now, one thing I have thought about doing is actually getting an adapter which converts the large PWM connectors to uh, micro PWM, which is the attachment which you have on the bottom of the graphics card. So the graphics card can then still control the fan speeds, which would be a nice thing to do in the future, but I haven't got one of those to hand. So this is one of those jobs that just needs doing because I've got Far Cry 5 and I need to play it. So this is the best way forward. So I'm gonna attach this and we'll be back straight after. Now what I did actually forget to mention with this is the actual, the, the costs involved. Now I could have bought a uh, Arctic Accelero Extreme 3 or X or whatever it is, but they're nearly 60 pounds, which for a graphics card, which has only cost me the equivalent of about 150, seems a little bit excessive. If it was a Vega 64 or um, a 1080, something like that, then yeah, I would definitely consider it. But for a, a very small kind of investment, this seems like a much better option. And being that I had the Arctic Freezer 33 eSports anyway, which at a moment is in between PCs, I figured I'd give it a go. Now what might be useful, because there is a overspill on the, uh, on the other side where you can't have any mountains, I was considering putting either a small blob of heat glue on there or maybe some sticky fixers or sticky pads, which I, I may well do, but I'm gonna try this first and see what the temperatures are like, uh, to see if it's necessary, because there is a, a little bit of a gap and a bit of a sort of, it's, it's a bit saggy there and it looks a bit bodged. So maybe if I can get another sticky pad in there, then that'll make things look a little bit nicer. But anyway, let's get it connected up, put the shroud back onto the graphics card, get it in the machine and see what the thermals are like. Okay, so that is the other side now. I've uh, decided I did have to put something sticky on there. So there is a little bit of sticky, uh, like a sticky pad or folded over sticky, sticky stuff, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. Double-sided tape, that's the word I was looking for. So we've got some double-sided tape. So now when that is actually uh, attached to the graphics card, even with the weight of it, it's, uh, it's going to hold firm and that should stay. And actually, if you look at it like that already, I don't think it looks too bad. It doesn't look that ghetto. Or does it? Let me know in the comments if you think it looks awful. Tell me. I'm interested. But um, these are actually quite nice looking fans and it's going to provide a lot of cooling. And I think it looks pretty good. And even from the other side, you can see uh, there is going to be a, a considerable amount of airflow coming through this thing. So let's get it all put back together and see how it performs. So that is it, completely put back together. Now, as you see, there's a little bit of an overhang on that side, which uh, isn't the worst thing in the world. And hopefully it's gonna actually provide some extra cooling for the heat pipe, which is going along there, which is one of the main channels uh, in and out of the CPU block. And I think from pretty much most angles, it actually looks, uh, 
looks quite quite good in a weird way. It doesn't look like it's totally been uh, sort of just slapped together. It looks all right, in my opinion. So let's give you a few uh, close-ups of that just so you can see it. Okay, well, good looks aren't everything. Performance is what matters. So let's stick it back in the PC. We'll fire it up and see what we can get the temperatures to and uh, see if this was worthwhile doing in, in the end anyway. Or if it's worth doing. You know what I mean. Let's try it out. So what I've got is a PWM fan splitter, which I've attached to the motherboard because in this case, uh, some of the headers are actually covered up by these fans underneath. So it's a little bit tricky to get my fingers in there. So to give me a fighting chance, I've got this extension on. You don't necessarily need it. Again, it depends on what your setup is like. But just this mean this makes it a lot easier to grab the cables and will also give me a way of uh, routing them after because I can just pull it all to one side and uh, forget it's all in there. So that tucked down at the bottom, you'd barely know that mess was there. Okay, so that isn't the greatest bit of wire in there. It would have been nice if that cable was separate, make it a little bit tidier, but there's the job. So anything left to do now is to plug back in the HDMI cable, smash up my tempered glass, and fire up. And we've got a lot of cooling going on there. So at the moment the BIOS is set for, I think it's about 60% RPMs on the fan. So that's pretty much the most I would put up with in that case. I'm gonna go into the BIOS and change that and set it to about 40%, I think. But it's extremely cool to the touch, although it would be because I've just turned it on. So I'm going to go ahead now and put some Far Cry 5 on, which should really uh, generate a little bit of heat in there. And we'll come back in a few minutes and see what the temperatures are like. So we'll see you in a bit. Okay, so I totally can't remember where I got to in the video. But anyway, I've been playing Far Cry 5 now for probably about half an hour or so to get it up to temperature. And currently it is running at 66 degrees, which is an amazing result from the uh, 90 degrees we were at before. So that's, uh, that's a pretty big gap and gives me a little bit of headroom for overclocking. Not that it's really needed because it runs quite happily. So I don't think I'll bother with that, but the options there if I want to. And I don't know, what do you think about the graphics card? Dropping stuff. I think it actually doesn't look too bad at all. I think the uh, extra fans I've got on, it gives it a little bit more sort of width and girth, but I think it looks pretty cool. Although it does now take up the best part of four PCI Express port sort of height. So uh, yeah, not a great idea if you're trying to run SLI. In fact, you would have no chance whatsoever, I don't think, with SLI, unless you're using uh, riser cards or some kind of riser cable. Anyway, I'm digressing. I think it looks great. It's actually really quiet now, so that is with the card pretty much 73% uh, load at the moment, so I'm stood still, but it has been up to 100% load and the fans are pretty much inaudible over the, f the noise of the rest of the fans in there and also the CPU fan. So for me, this has been a, a, a great experiment and it's proved that bigger is better, despite what some people will tell you. So if you've got two fans lying around, some 120 mil fans and you fancy cooling your graphics card and you've got an RX 580 or something along those lines and you just need to keep it a little bit cooler, then this is a great way to do it. 
So if you've got any comments or questions on this video, stick them in the comments section below. In the meantime, I'll be Mike. This is Mike's unboxing reviews on how to, and we will catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.